Hi, welcome in Sikwa, Atlante, Haukoda, Haukola, Haukoa, Toao, and Tansi. Um, welcome to uh, yet again another installment of SAS Polytech's Indigenous Students Community Connections. Uh, this, I believe, is the first one being recorded of the 2022 year. So, welcome everybody. It's a cold, cold Wednesday right now. Uh, and I hope everybody is staying warm and safe from the a very transmittable Omicron. So uh, let's hope that everybody's safe. And if you are uh, feeling symptomatic, that you're staying home. Um, as we start with all of our programming, I'd like to just make a land acknowledgement. Uh, SAS Polytech uh, being in four different campuses are located on Treaty 4 and Treaty 6, uh, as well as homeland of the Métis people. We uh, often assert the connection between the land and the people before our programming. And now more than ever, it's important to, to make those distinctions and acknowledge the importance. Uh, so uh, I will introduce myself. I'll tell you guys a couple uh, quick announcements, and then I will bring on our very esteemed, and I am really interested to talk to this guest for both professional and personal reasons. I'll get into that in a second. My name is Derek Yee. I'm coming to you from Saskatoon campus. I work as the uh, Indigenous Student Center Coordinator for Isito Skatayak which of course is our Indigenous Student Center located here in room 121.4 at Saskatoon campus. Asitaskatek, for those who don't recall, is a Cree word that means strengthening together. And uh, today's community connection is really going to hopefully strengthen um, some things for me uh, together because we're gonna be talking about some credit and how we can strengthen our credit and build our credit and how we can make our credit resilient. So before, uh, before I bring on our guest, I would like to just let you guys know that uh, in this upcoming first two weeks of February, we've got our Indigenous Storytelling. Uh, Indigenous Storytelling is an event that's really exciting, and we do it every year in February, where we couple with library services. If you want information on uh, these events, please Google uh, Indigenous Storytelling Sask Polytech Library. You'll see that uh, on February 1st, we've got Dickie Uzichipi. We've got um, the great Court, Court Dognier going to be talking about um, some Métis perspectives on February 3rd. Uh, Lyndon Tatusis, this is the live event that's going to be taking place in PA. That's on February 4th. Uh, my very good friend and former Community Connections guest, Ryan Moccasin, is going to be on February 7th. And then we have Solomon Ratt who is going to be sharing some traditional Cree stories uh, on February 8th. And if you haven't seen Solomon Rat chat, please do so. And I did not mean to make that rhyme. I feel kind of dopey for doing that. But if you have not seen any of these people speak, make sure you do so. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest. Today we have from Credit Counseling Society of Canada, uh, Mar uh, Mary Castillo. Castillo. Uh, I, I asked her how to pronounce that, and then I immediately screwed it up after. Uh, so we have a Credit Counseling Society of Canada, which is a nationally accredited uh, nonprofit uh, designed to try to help. Well, I'll let her. I'll let her explain herself. So, Mary, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Derek. Um, I'm so happy to be here today and um, and just want to tell you a little bit about our organization. Uh, Credit Counseling Society, we're a nonprofit organization and we help people from BC all the way to Ontario, as well as the three different territories. Um, we've been around just over 25 years um, and our, our motto is we help, we educate and we give hope. Um, just a little bit about that, how we help is through free credit counseling appointments that right now can be done over the phone or through video call. Um, I've actually been the resident credit counselor here in Saskatoon for many years. I've worked with this company for seven years now, and I moved into this education role um, in August of last year. And so um, as a credit counselor, I've had firsthand experience on how we help people. Um, we, as a credit counselor, what we do is we help you with uh, creating a budget or a spending plan. Um, if you're dealing with debt issues, then we go through your options. And the great thing about our company is we have no vested interest with any options we talk about. So um, we're not here to sell you anything. We're here just to give you information of how to help you. So we talk about ways you can manage debts on your own. We 
do have an option where we can mediate and reduce interest rates with a payment plan. And we also go through legal options where um, if you did need to claim bankruptcy or do a consumer proposal, we refer you on. And then um, outside of our counseling appointments, we offer these lovely educational sessions that uh, throughout um, our communities. And these workshops are great. So one of the things we're gonna talk about today is the truth about credit or learning about your credit score. And um, that's something I'm really passionate about. There's a lot of questions that come up. And so I'm just excited to talk to you about that. And then um, outside of that, our, our, our last part of our motto is we give hope. And you know, um, our company just really prides herself on, on just getting services to um, anybody that needs help. So there's, um, you don't have to be of, uh, you don't have to have money to come to us. We're here as a nonprofit company to offer those services um, free of charge so that you can get that help that you need and also get an opinion from somebody that is not there to sell you anything. So you can make a, an informed decision on what you're going to do moving forward. I would, I think that that is an absolutely perfect way to bundle that information up and let us know what you're here for, because I think that giving hope and as well as knowing that you don't have any skin in the game and that you're not selling anything at the end of this, that's so important because I know that from my own perspective, uh, when it comes to finances and stuff, things can become really complicated really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to use this opportunity to really make this as simple as possible because I really don't think that people uh, do get as enough, enough education about this topic as they possibly should. So let's start with let's start with just right at the ground floor here. What is a credit score? So a credit score, actually, so for the students out there, um, I always like to put it in perspective. Imagine you uh, write an exam, and on the exam, you have multiple choice, short answers, a bunch of different types of questions that you're at. Uh, asked to answer and then you get an overall score for how you've done on those questions. Well with a, a credit score, a credit report, what it does is it, it tells um, yourself as well as any individual that's looking at trying to um, offer you credit, it gives them an ability to look at how you've been doing um, and how your history has been in regards to uh, do you have uh, a credit card, do you have a cell phone plan, do you have any kind of loans that if I lend you money are you going to pay me back? So so um, it, the credit score uh, is, is calculated by different ratings. There's different things that come up on um, a credit report. And that score kind of gives a lender or, or somebody that's going to be giving you something, um, an overall checkup to say, okay, you know, this person is, is uh, paying on time or, you know, maybe they've had some issues in the past, but then they're resolving them. That kind of comes out through that overall score. Okay, so I've actually, thank you very much. That's a really good succinct way to explain that. I've actually heard, uh, you know, different terms. So credit rating versus credit score. Uh, was, is there a difference between these two terms? Like, or how, how would you define them? Yeah, so a rating is specific to, um, we call it a trade line. So if I had a MasterCard and, um, it would be noted on my credit report as a line. And then if I had a cell phone, that would be another trade line. And so every uh, type of uh, thing credit that I have, if I have a MasterCard or a loan or a, a cell phone bill, each one of those has an actual rating to it. And then at the bottom of your credit report is an overall score. And that can range from as low as 300 to as high as 900. And really that overall score at the bottom is Again, it's kind of your odds of paying something back. So if somebody was to look at it, what are your odds to pay that back? So if I've missed payments on a MasterCard, then my rating will be like showing as paid on time or uh, maybe I'm a month behind or a couple months behind, um, whereas that score gives that overall tally, kind of like that overall grade of a test. Uh, so if I'm going to be using an analogy, and forgive me, this analogy might not apply, but we've got a lot of students here, obviously, who are post-secondary. Um, each one of those credit rating score lines, or what you call them point lines, or? I call them trade lines. So trade lines. If, yeah. if you thought of each one of those trade lines as a class, right, your credit score might be your overall average uh, of all of those classes sort of thing. That's Is that right? Yeah, and so that's a good if, way to kind of visualize that, yeah. Yeah, thank goodness, because I thought you'd be like, that's not what I said, and then I would feel really lost. But uh, And so if you were thinking about, let's say, each one of those trade lines as being a class, not making a payment might be, you know, behind on an assignment or something. And that might, you know, drop your score, your overall average, until you handed in that assignment, which either might raise it back up or 
keep it. Is this, am I stretching? That's good. No, that's perfect. That's a great way to think of it. Yeah. Good. So um, can we talk then about what these different trade lines are? Would like, what would constitute a trade line? What would constitute each one of these classes, if you will, that you can get, you can, that you can get credit or that, you know, work on credit. Uh, what, what would be some classic examples? So um, if you, th there's revolving type of credit. So for example, that would be like a credit card. So if I had a MasterCard or a Visa, then that would be every time you had as many credit cards that you have, that would be each individual trade line. So that would be um, one way to get access to um, start building your overall credit score. Um, one thing that plays a big role in a lot of people's lives is cell phones. Um, a lot of people don't know that cell phone plans actually report on a credit report and it's considered an open type of credit so it has an O so if we see we'll see the name of the type of uh, thing that you have on your credit report so it would be a MasterCard and then it would have an R because it's revolving whereas a cell phone would be an O because it's open and I will tell you that actually cell phones play one of the biggest roles on your credit report because you do want to make sure you pay that one off in full if you don't pay it off in full every month then it will actually hinder your credit score because it will show almost Almost like a missed payment. Whereas if you have a MasterCard and you're just making the minimum payment and you're you're not paying it off in full, then that's okay. As long as you're making that minimum payment, then that will give you um, a good grade, if we say, to um, help with that overall score. And then there's yeah, there's vehicle loans that report, um, as well as there's lines of credit um, and, and different types of installment loans that you might get, maybe for a renovation or purchasing something where you pay it down. Wow. Okay. The, the, the distinction that you made about cell phones, now that's kind of a new thing that they can go to the credit bureau with your cell phone bill. It's not really new. I mean, it's probably a decade old now, but it's one of the newer ones that they can actually affect your credit rating. I work with students sometimes and they're like, no, phones don't. And I said, no, they they do now, you know. So yeah, it's important that people understand that Sestel is holding some, some cards now. And so is Rogers and Bell and Telus and wherever else, right? Yeah, and, and just when I was dealing as a, a credit counselor with individuals, a lot of times, maybe you have a dispute with a cell phone provider. Maybe there's something that happened and you're angry and you don't want to pay them because they, they, they're not doing what you want them to do. Um, what I always suggest to do is if there is any kind of dispute is, is to pay off that bill and then go after them and try to resolve that. Because if you uh, just stop paying them, then that will actually put that into collections and it will have huge repercussions on your overall credit score. Mary, where were you about eight years ago? Because I left, a, I won't say the name, but uh, I left a provider uh, and I had a bill of about $12, I think, left over. And I said, I'm done. I'm not doing this because you've admitted, right? And there was a whole big thing. And I'm not going to get into it because I am moved past that. But it did, in fact, affect my credit score owing that small amount. And when I had to pay it back, I think that the interest, and I didn't have, I just had lost the fight <laughs> and I thought, what am I doing? This is $12. But then when I went to pay it back, it was like $40. But more so than that, when I went to get, uh, when I went to speak with the bank about getting a uh, home renovation thing, they said, this is, this is actually quite impactful. So they do have, it has a lot of sway on it. Hey. Yeah, and it's surprising like that something so small like that can have such a big effect on your overall credit score and it can impact you later in life. Um, so that's why, again, we like I, I always like to bring up that cell phone uh, specifically because most most people have a cell phone and they use those regularly and there can be disputes that happen. And so it's just important that we um, are aware of this, that it can affect us and how strong it can affect us. You're, I would have been better off to just have paid it and I continue to dispute it at my leisure because then the, ba the ball's in my court because time's on my side, essentially. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that's right. That's okay, so exactly that makes right. you and my partner, Laura, that would definitely agree with that's how I should have handled it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't let me be Even a Even though it's frustrating. <laughs> it's a cautionary tale. Uh, yeah. So I do have another quick question for you. Um, I have had some uh, a, a parking ticket where I've, I've even I've had lots of students that have said, you know what, I'm parking by, let's say, downtown, by a restaurant or something, and, and, and they give me this parking ticket. Do they have access to a credit rating? And if it's not a city, I'm talking private. City, city ones, I would assume you have to, you have to rectify because you're going to get SGI caught up, but 
if it yeah. was a private one. So any kind of tickets that you have, if they go into collections, if you don't pay them, then they will report on your credit report. So um, if you if you get a ticket and you you know maybe are late, but then pay it, it doesn't go into collections, then you don't have to worry about that. But if, if it does go into collections, um, then it will report on your credit report and can have negative impact. Um, one thing about something with collections uh, is if you have like a utility bill that goes into collections or a ticket, if you you pay that off, you can actually get that removed from your credit report. Whereas if you have had like a credit card or um, say a cell phone go into collections um, or like a loan, um, then if you pay it off, it will show as collection paid, but it will stay there for six years after last paid. So still having some impact. Now, is that because you've entered into a contract where you're saying I'm going to be paying every, right? Whereas a ticket is something that just comes up. Is that sort of the difference? Actually, that's a good question. I haven't been asked that before. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. That sounds like probably um, good, but I'm, I couldn't tell you for sure. I just know that um, like for, for utility bills and tickets, you can get them removed um, and they won't you know, affect you long-term like something else would. So um, I have actually had students talk about, they said, well, you know, uh, Impark can't do that. They can't go to, but I've said, uh, you know, I think they obviously can. So we've heard it here. They, they can do that. They can, they can affect your rating. Yeah. yeah they can, as long, if it goes into a collection and a collection agency starts dealing with it, absolutely. It starts to report on your credit report as negative. So how does somebody get a bearing on where their credit rating is or their credit score is? How do they get that information? So um, anybody can get a free copy of their credit report. It will not have the score, but you can get a free copy from Equifax and TransUnion. And uh, I, we always suggest that everyone would check your credit report once a year. And you want to check both of them because there's two main credit reporting agencies in Canada. But to actually get the score, um, Actually, I will say a lot of banks are offering this to people. So if you bank with an institution that will give you access to that, they'll be able to give you uh, your credit report with the score. Um, but if you did want the score um, and you don't get it from your bank, then uh, you have to pay for it and you can get it through Equifax and TransUnion. Um, and it's it's reasonable amount. Um, I, like, I, I can't remember off the top of my head because it's been a while since I, I bought it myself, but it's under forty dollars around there, like yeah. probably closer to twenty. Yeah, it's I can't tell you exact amount, but yeah, it's it's, it's good because if somebody's planning on doing something like a home renovation or they're planning, well, you know what, I might get a credit card. It's good to know what your chances are of actually securing those things, right? Uh, do you do you happen to have? It is maybe this is a bit of a loaded question, but you said it was three hundred all the way up to nine hundred, nine hundreds. You know, that's where my sister would be. <laughs> I would be somewhere a little lower. But what 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 kind of a score do you need to get a credit card? Or is that a hard way to answer? Or what kind of a score? Um, no, so actually, um, you can you can get a credit card even if your credit score is greatly impacted. So um, I will say if you if you've had hindrances on your credit report, maybe your credit score is low, like close to that three hundred mark, um, yeah. or you you have never had credit before in your life and and you haven't been able to get a credit card. The best way to do that is something called a cash secured credit card, and so. Um, how you can get something like that is, is you save up some money. Usually it's um, uh, with some companies, it's as low as $75 or as high as 500. You save up that money and you give that money to the company as a deposit and they hold that deposit in an account and it's frozen there. And then they'll give you a credit card to use. When you use the credit card, you pay it back monthly. And what that will do is it will help to bring that overall score up because you've had good use of that. But also for somebody that's brand new and they have not had credit in the past, the secured card is a, a great way to get that started. And, um, and the reason why they'll offer that to you is because you have this deposit here. And if you miss payments on the card, then they have that collateral that they can take away. So um, I will say that, you know, in order to get a credit card to get started, um, even if your credit score has been greatly impacted, that's a way that you can get uh, access to, to start building your credit up. Wow, that I did not know that that existed. Um, 
I uh, one more note I just want to say because this is a confusion that happens too is um, a lot of people get confused with uh, prepaid credit cards and secured credit cards and I'm, I'm just going to describe the, the other um, option is a uh, prepaid credit card if, if I always say think of it like a gift card you load it up with money and then you spend the money and then you load it up again. A prepaid credit card can be used for a lot of different things, just like a normal credit card would, but it does not report on your credit report. So I always think of it like a gift card. It's like I bought a gift card and, and I put money on it like a Tim Hortons card and I bought coffee and I'm going to load it up again. Whereas a secured credit card where you go to a company, they're holding money as collateral, they'll give you a credit card to use and, and you use it, pay it back monthly, this reports on your credit report. And that's what you want to use to build it up. Yeah, I thank you for making that distinction because I actually have had students in the center that have said, I don't understand it. I, I've been using a lot of money. And I said, oh, are these the cards with the little ice cream cone on them? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I think those ones don't count because you've kind of bought them, really. Um, yeah. So what would you say? I, here's a quick question for you. Uh, people come in and uh, they might say, I I'm able to get financing for a computer or a car or whatever. And they look at your credit and sometimes, you know, somebody has made some, you know, indiscretions in the past like myself. And then all of a sudden it's like they will finance it. But if your credit rating is low, is it my understanding that they not, they're not going to give you the best rates at that point? That's, that's kind of how they assure because they're like, is that how that works? Yeah, so um, a lot of times if you if you can't get access to credit through your normal financial institutions uh, or financing companies and you get it through uh, a place where they're going to give you access to that, but if your credit rating has been affected, it will be a very high interest rate. And um, one thing that I always um, like to bring up is when you have a high interest rate, you want to look at first, how much is this actually going to cost us? Or if I'm, if I'm going to take out this loan and it's like 20, 28%, you know, that's almost three times what you are buying the thing for. You're going to spend three times the amount of money to pay that back over a period of time and depending on how fast you pay it off. Um, the other thing too that you want to pay attention to when you're going to get a loan, um, as an example, there, there can be really high interest loans like payday loans um, that might show as a lower interest rate, but they're calculated um, every two weeks with that interest rate instead of an annual percentage rate, whereas a normal loan is over an annual percentage rate. So um, if they calculate, if they showed you the annual percentage rate for something like a payday loan, it works out to like 390% um, actually, instead of showing at like 15% interest. I've um, heard that. So annual, yeah. if somebody's got a credit card and a, and a normal base rate starting credit cards at 19, 20%, right? Yeah. That would be if you had a thousand dollar limit and over a year, then you'd be paying 20% of a thousand. So that'd be what, you know, $200. And then breaking that down by month, However, yeah, it's worked on a daily that. basis of how much you're using it and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and there's a period that you don't have to pay interest on on credit cards. But um, yeah, so there's there's some other little calculations that go into that. But um, when you but the biggest thing you look at is is it is it calculated on annual percentage rate or is it calculated differently? And and you want the loans that would be over an annual percentage rate because you you're effectively getting what it's showing you. It's more realistic. Um, there's actually a really uh, cool article that Marketplace put out about oh. high interest loans um, that, you know, somebody could Google and look at high interest loans with Marketplace. And they did a huge study on that. And it's uh, it shows like they, they show the calculations and they talk more in depth about that. So that's something that I would encourage people to look into if they want to learn more. And yes, and certainly I, you know, we, we don't ever want to say if somebody's running a business that's legal that there that there's a unethical issues or anything like that. But the fact of the matter is sometimes these loans do come across these short-term loans, they do come across a bit predatory. So you you probably would usher people to stay away from those unless in lesson. Right. Yeah, I would like again, they have their time in place. I will say that like if, if you, for example, maybe my car broke down and I need to get to work and I have to have my car and I just don't have a chance to go to the bank and I'm just neat or else the bank won't approve me, but I, I know I can pay it off very soon then maybe I'll get something like a high interest loan, but it's short term. So I'm not paying a huge amount of interest over time. So there is definitely a time and place for that. Um, but ideally overall, 
um, we, you know, we say try to stay away from that. Um, again, that's part of some of the supports that we offer at Credit Counseling Society is, is helping people create a spending plan so that they're putting savings away for those emergencies or unexpected expenses. Um, and then also um, some supports we offer too is if people have fallen into kind of like a payday loan cycle or high interest loan yeah. situation, uh, we can help to mediate that and we can give also some other options so that uh, you're not stuck, um, which is huge, huge, because that can be a night and day difference. Um, it can be a very, situation. That, that, brings, that brings me to two really awesome points. And I'd like to make the first one in that working with your organization and certainly having the opportunity to chat with you today, uh, what I really respect is working with, you know, yourself and Tim uh, and the others is that it, I don't ever, ever get the sense that there's a judgment when, when we're talking about this. And, and I, I find that sometimes, you know, going in and having a financial conversation about spending or overages and things like that, it can feel as though you're being judged and that keeps people's head firmly in the sand. I know that sometimes I've had bank meetings. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have some explaining to do, you know. So I love that you guys come across that way. And another thing that uh, that I would like to remind our students of who may be watching this or prospective students, uh, if you do get into issues where you have uh, an, a thing that arises in your life, an unexpected barrier uh, that threatens your ability to maintain uh, your, your seat in programs, we have access to emergency bursaries. So again, no judgment on anybody using a legal uh, short-term loan, uh, but please make sure that you're contacting your advisor prior to getting into those if you have not done so for an emergency bursary. Uh, I, I heard something. Now, that is that if you ask for your credit score from, uh, you know, these things, then it can actually affect your credit rating. Isn't that kind of like, that's like, that's like what I feel like when I have to ask for a roadmap and I'm like, oh, now my partner's going to judge me and say I'm not a good driver. Uh, <laughs> that's a great, great question to bring up. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of myths and questions around that that I get. So um, when you have your pull your credit report, there's two types of hits that can happen. So there's a hard hit and a soft hit. So for example, if I pulled my own credit report, I can pull my credit report a thousand times a day, as many times as I want. It will never ever affect my credit score because it's considered a soft hit. Okay. So how I keep it straight in my mind is somebody is just looking at the credit report for information. Uh, they're just looking at that for information, then that's a soft hit on a credit report. But if I'm applying to get a credit card or a loan um, of some sort, then it's a hard hit on my credit report. And if I'm applying to a lot of different places, that will have a very large impact on my credit score overall. So it'll start to affect my credit score. Um, and so there is some exceptions to the rule though. Um, so when we think of um, getting your credit report pulled, it's Imagine, you know, you're applying for something. That's when it's going to be a hard hit. And the exception to the rule is if you're shopping for a vehicle loan or a mortgage. Okay. Uh, so there, there is actually, um, it's 14 to 45 days. So I always think maybe a month, two weeks or a month time period. If, if I'm shopping for a vehicle loan, I'm going to shop in that shorter time span because I can shop. I can go from place to place to place to place to place. And I can shop around and it will only be considered one hit on my credit report. Just like a mortgage, I can shop from place to place. During a short period of time, one hit is, is considered as, as um, a hit on my credit report. But if I'm applying for a uh, credit card at say Walmart or Canadian Tire or the bank or in you know, all these different places, every time I go to apply at these different places, it's a hard hit. And so if you have many hard hits, then that score will um, start to come down. It makes sense. It looks like, yes. Okay. So if I'm using my analogy, it's not a problem to pull over and ask for directions to know where you are. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're a bad driver, but if you're often calling a tow truck because you're crashing or you're looking for some help that way, that might, uh, that might affect your, that might affect the way that you look. That's um, a great analogy. I like that. <laughs> well, it's, it's very salient in my life because I sometimes uh, reluctant to ask for help when I'm driving and I definitely should as well as I should probably know my credit score a little bit better. You know what, having you here, uh, I got to say it's opened up a whole host of questions for me. This, this topic 
just unfolds, right? And I would like to say that, you know, if if the, for the people that are watching, you know, we don't ever want to make these uh, these interviews too long, so we are going to conclude probably now. However, I would like to I'd like to make an invitation to you if we have enough people that are interested and they want to get a little bit more deep breadth of knowledge about how this works, and maybe even ask some questions live on a, on a Zoom where we could we could put this uh, out to different uh, places. Um, make sure you make sure you say uh, in the chat underneath, or make sure you say in the comment section underneath that you would be interested. We're going to keep an eye on uh, the views and how many people are engaged with this, and hopefully, you know what, we're, we're going to have some people, and we'll be able to invite you back to get some deeper questions because I feel like we barely just scratched the surface. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I would love to come back, and I and I hope the viewers or people that watch this want to learn more. Um, it is it's kind of like opening a can of worms. There's so many things that come about from this topic, and there's so many myths out there that uh, people question, and they and it's good to get clarification on that. Um, there's there's a lot of different uh, you know questions that will come up, and um, again, I, I hope that we can do this in the future. I do too. And for all of us uh, here from uh, SAS Polytech Indigenous students, uh, Keenan Escomitan, uh, thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, her name is Mary Casello, and uh, she is with the uh, Credit, Society, Credit Counseling Society of Canada. And um, again, we thank you guys. Uh, thanks, and uh, we wish you the best. Um, with SAS, everybody. And that's our time. Bye.